Welcome to another episode of our Time with Zero Music Technology Service. In this episode, we present to you a mind blowing art experiment called the Plant Orchestra. This plant has been connected to the synthesizer and creates different sounds that can be transformed and heard by human beings. Let's look at this installation and find out how it actually works and what connects the plant to the synthesizer. That's connected to these two sensors and the, the signal from those sensors are amplified through this uh, amplifier and converted into a control voltage signal that uh, allows the signal from the plant to control this synthesizer we have here. So that and this synthesizer is producing one note then that is uh, able to change uh, according to the changes of the plant and then we play that together with a steady note coming from this organ over here it's like the organ plays a note that is totally the same all the time and then to begin with we adjust it in a way where the, the note from the plant and the note from the organ is the exact same note so that if we uh, leave this running for half an hour or one hour or how, what, however how long we want to do it we are able to follow whether the note of the plant changes uh, in comparing to the steady note then you will start hearing different things happening in the overtones and like to hear the interference between the two notes and the interesting thing about it is also that uh, many experiments have been made with the music being played to plants and it's been proven uh, many times that plants react to, to music so it's interesting to see uh, how the plant reacts when it is actually able to hear the note it is producing itself and that creates a kind of a feedback loop with the, with the plant controlling the synthesizer and the synthesizer coming out in the room and the plant hearing the sound from the synthesizer. How does the sound of the plant change with the time? Did you observe certain changes in the overtone series? It was very, I think maybe to begin with we would expect more big changes, but then it turns out it's really small changes that you can hear like, because we had a, both the plant and the organ playing a rather deep notes, so what would happen would be like in the in the overtones of those notes, like... We make the decisions as a starting point, mm -hmm. and then we don't do anything. So you can, you can, you can, as a starting point, you can take a really high note that sounds really distorted or whatever, but the point is to leave it alone and then because that's when you start following the reactions in the plant. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's more like in that way it works. You could also connect this thing to a, to a sampler or whatever and then have it like controlling samples and something. But you always have to yourself decide where to start. But the whole idea is to do that and then to take your hands off and then see how it develops. Mm -hmm. That's that's when you that's where you start seeing what the plant does. What would happen if you connect more than one plant to the synthesizer at the same time, and if you tune the performance of each of these plants to the same basic frequency? Yeah, you, you will have some microtonal uh, drone piece. What would you have? Microtonal drone piece? Yeah, I guess like if you took eight, let's say we took eight plants, and you would take all the connect them to the synthesizer the way this is, and you put them all on. 442 hertz to begin with and then you go away and then you leave it and you would have like one plant uh, dropping a little bit in pitch and one plant maybe raising a little bit and you could imagine this really dense really like one one like it would never do this big jump but they would like start out exact the same and then they would all spread out like this and then you would really hear it would be very interesting here. Do you think that this kind of biofeedback is scientifically observable? I think that that's really my uh, approach to it, uh, mostly like this uh, feedback thing, where you, uh, because we are uh, reading about it and there's really a lot of experiments uh, 
done with that and it's it's pretty easy to see. You can also do the experiments where you have uh, two plants and every day you talk really nicely to one plant and you are uh, really rude to the other plant and the one you talk nice to uh, grows uh, more uh, grows better and it gets bigger and more healthy than the other one. So all these things has uh, many many experiments. So the interesting thing for this exact setup was to see this uh, how how this uh, feedback would work with the plant being able to control the the sound that is, is coming out like how would it what would what would it do to that but and of course another important thing to that is it, it, it takes a lot of time you won't uh, have the big reaction within uh, half a minute it's really over long periods of time you see the change do you think that the plant has a soul um yes but i, I think but in a very basic way. <laughs> I think there's a soul in everything somehow. But there, there are like sometimes like I read this books like like that a plant can really feel with its owner or something like this. You know that the, the owner of the plant goes on holiday and meets a nice lady and the plant is at home and feels it and is really happy. <laughs> and I really I don't believe in this. I think, uh, like, I, I like the plants, I, I feel connected, I like to work with, work with nature, but I think I work with this more from a scientific, scientific side. It's a mixture, mixture about it, so I, I like to hear what is happening, and I also want to find out if I find out something that I can think about. So maybe I find out a kid is, that is really communicating with me and I didn't believe in it before, and then suddenly. Yeah, I have uh, another knowledge afterwards. That's all about the second sentence. <laughs> mm -hmm.